purpose for, for this evening is to shake things up a bit. But don't worry, you are not going to feel anything shaking, except maybe for my voice, which is already going crazy. Um, what I would like to ask you to do for the beginning is to imagine this following situation. You are in the middle of an earthquake. The ground is shaking, the buildings are falling, uh, the roads are breaking, and there are quite possibly some fires around. Did any one of you feel uncomfortable or maybe even scared by these thoughts? <laughs> I know. <laughs> A few years ago, I've actually seen my grandfather's facial expression change at the smallest sign of vibration from the house. And I, asked, I heard him ask, is this an earthquake? I did not understand his reaction then, but then I realized it was because 40 years ago, he has lived the major earthquake that hit Romania, and he wasn't ready for that shock. Now, we all have a certain fear of hazards, and it's natural. But the problem is, in order to protect our feelings, we try to convince ourselves that we would always be in control of our surroundings, when in fact, statistically, we are very likely to uh, experience at least one major earthquake during our lifetimes. Psychologically, the further we are in time from a major event, the more likely it is for it to happen again. But our awareness decreases proportionally, which is exactly what we were talking about before. Even if we do hear about this news, we choose to ignore them. And this is because of the, the second fact, and this is that the more we hear about an unpleasant topic, the more we choose to ignore these facts, uh, the facts we hear, and we try to block this information from our brains. And if there are smokers in the audience, I'm sure you've had a lot of, or you've heard a lot of reasons why smoking is bad, but you choose to ignore them. This is exactly how it happens with earthquakes nowadays. Uh, but this is exactly why we need to be prepared. If we choose to ignore the statistics, all we actually manage to do is to be just as unprepared as my grandfather was 40 years ago. So the key to preparedness, as odd as it may sound, is embracing the fact that this could happen to us. Now, the good news is, being prepared does not take that much effort. You do not have to know every technical aspect that goes into uh, creating a building, because otherwise without, you'd leave me without job. Um, but I do think people do need more education in this matter because I strongly believe that the only way we can change things is if we work together. And I say this because this is how I started um, working and learning about uh, earthquake resistant structures. I was a part of a team uh, comprised of many amazing people. And our goal was to create a structure that would maximize the chances of survival of those who would live inside it um, at the major earthquake. You can see our model over there. And it was made of balsa wood. Now, because uh, we used a balsa wood uh, model, we had to um, ensure that the structure is stiffness. And we did that by using a lot of um, bracings, both vertical and horizontal bracings. Besides the, um, the elements you would normally consider in a, when uh, creating a building, and those are the columns, the beams, and maybe the shear walls. The whole concept of what we did there could be simplified and explained like this. Look at this small scale model. If I'm going to try to shake this on the direction it has been braced, I can do this from the base as well, or from the top, you will see the structure is almost not moving. But if I'm going to change the di direction of the movement to this other side where I have not braced my structure, you will immediately notice the difference. And it's clear that we got a very different response from this second test. Um, but even though we do know this difference, thousands of people are still dying due to earthquakes. And this is not only in Romania, but everywhere in the world. So why does it keep happening? Well, one aspect would be that even though we do know these rules, we sometimes choose to ignore them because we value time and money more than safety. Okay, not 
not necessarily value them. But if we forgot about the previous earthquake, we could forget about its effects. And by ignoring these facts, all we, get, all we do is to um, allow poorly executed buildings to uh, accommodate people who are at risk without even having an idea about the risk they're in. Now, the problem is, the other problem is that safety recommendations are not only about new buildings, they are about the old, um, they, are, they refer to old bu buildings as well. And uh, most of the old buildings are, are uh, standing in normal conditions, but they could be easily considered very extremely risky during an earthquake scenario because their structure was not designed to, to help hold one. And the thing is, a lot of buildings from Bucharest are in this situation. All of the red dot uh, buildings from Bucharest are extremely uh, risky for us, uh, a seism. So, if you would think about the most densely occupied uh, areas from Romania, you would actually uh, see that those areas are, are the ones uh, with the, uh, that also have the biggest seismic risk. So. Uh, the lives of a lot of people are in the hands of our decisions, um, which is why we need to be very careful with what, to, what we do, because an earthquake is a cyclic event. We do not know when the next one will strike, but we do know it will. Now, um, try to think of this, this other scenario. Try to think about your day. Uh, try to imagine how you wake up, you get yourself ready, um, you leave the house to go to school or to work or maybe even the park. But imagine you've done this immediately after an earthquake. The scenario, scenario will probably not be very nice because you'd, all you'd see are fallen roads and buildings and cars and everything. But what I would like for us to do today is to change our focus. And instead of uh, burdening ourselves with all this unpredictability and all these negative aspects of the earthquake, I would like for us to try to focus on uh, being prepared and to think that if we are prepared, we could actually save lives, not just our own, but of the people around us. So I know many of you have heard that during an earthquake, it is recommended to place ourselves under a beam or under a door. But the thing is, I've only showed you one aspect of the structural design. But the appliances we have and the electronics, if they are not properly um, uh, placed on the um, walls or on the floors, could actually produce even more harm because they could move, they could hurt us, or they could um, produce financial damages. So the problem with our our education is that it only limits itself to the very moment of the earthquake. The important things for us to understand is that uh, we have to, to separate this event in three ma major parts. What we can do before the earthquake, what we are going to do in, in, the, uh, in the time of the earthquake, and what we are going to do bef after the earthquake. And if we try to separate these things and try to uh, imagine how to solve our problems in every single step of this this uh, event, I'm sure we would be way more comfortable knowing that uh, we are prepared. Now, I would like for us to uh, go back to that second, uh, second picture I was talking about and imagine your day again and think about how you wake up and you get yourself ready and you uh, leave the house to go to school or to work or to, to the park. And this time, try to imagine in detail and try to focus on the things that could harm you. And think of ways you could secure them and make them, uh, make them safer. And I'm sure you would be more relaxed thinking about an earthquake from now on. The thing is, um, we can actually make this difference. We just have to change our focus. And I am sure I have a lot more to learn about earthquakes and about how to be prepared for one, and even about how to design a good structure. But I am willing to learn, and this, this is what I'm going to invite you to do, is to learn alongside me. Thank you.